Hi, I'm Jackson Kendall. Hi, my name is Jenny Dozak. One of my first memories, I think, is when I was in Sunday school here at church. Uh, I've had several teachers along the way. Mrs. Deby, who was uh, near and dear to my heart, um, taught Sunday school here for 50 plus years. And she um, was actually my confirmation mentor as well. Miss Dee's classroom was so great because it was just kind of like tradition to go to her class. Like every, everybody here from like my age to like 30 or 40 like years old, the members had all been taught by Miss Dee. Bee. To have that time with her, I think it developed a, a relationship as I grew up in the church to the point where um, she would take me out for my birthday and um, as she found out, just like everyone found out she had a bell collection, she found out that I collected dolls and from that point on she um, would give me dolls that she found um, at different sales that she'd go to or things like that and so I have those memories to take with me as well and she would always write me a birthday card and she'd always sign it, uh, Sister in Christ, Dorothy D.B. She seemed like she never aged. She always seemed like she was just perfect and she always had her songs that would just teach us about God. It was great. Growing up, I attended uh, the Lake Wapagasset Bible Camp with uh, several of my friends, and we would go during the summer. Uh, I also returned uh, as I got older as a Tim Team member, where uh, it was that stands for Teens in Mission. It wasn't until this past year that I got to go as a Tim Teamer, and that's when we would go and we stay actually away from the camp where the other campers are. And we have our own thing going on. We get there earlier, like two days earlier. We prep and like just like see how we're going to help our counselors with the kids. And then in the morning, we would go over to the camp where the campers are and then just experience church camp with them. And then at the end of the night, we go back to our camp. Going to camp was always a, a fun experience. And having campfire at night, and my fondest memory is probably uh, when we'd go in the chapel and sing camp songs. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, saved a wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The mission trips that I have um, been on have been uh, a life experience that I will never forget and I'm so grateful uh, to our church for helping to sponsor us and give us that opportunity uh, to have that kind of faith journey. Our first mission trip uh, was chaperoned uh, by Jonathan and Teresa. And uh, as our silly selves decided to uh, tape Jonathan to the front seat while he was sleeping. And as a chaperone, it was even funnier. And the fact that he never woke up the entire time um, until we actually woke him up and he realized his predicament and I think now as a chaperone that I hope nobody ever tries to pull that on me. <laughs> Something that I always remember about being at camp was the games. There's a game that we play called Mighty Mighty Scoop Noodle Challenge where it's like you're on a giant like four soccer fields field, like this huge field. 
and they make a perimeter out of these milk carton boxes, and then the whole camp plays at once. And there's like all these random items, like a football and a noodle on the other side. And there's two teams, and you run and try to take the other team's item, and they tag you, and you're out. And it's just, it lasts for a long time. No one ever really wins. It's just, it's just a really fun game. As a chaperone, it's always funny to to look at the youth and think, oh, I totally have been there. And on one of the trips in particular, I remember kind of catching a couple of them and saying, like I didn't, you know, like I've never been there before, or did you really think you're gonna get by with that? And so to kind of, to catch them in those things that of course I probably did um, when I was on mission trips. For our first annual get together for our young adult group, we planned a commando lock-in night. Commando, oh, it's, I think every, every person should play in their lifetime. I first learned about it when my sister Veronica told me about it because she went to game night. And commando is a game where two people are like the chasers and they each have a flashlight and they take an item and they hide it anywhere they want within a boundary that you make. Sanctuary is off limits but um, it has to be visible from at least two to three angles. And all the lights are off. When you're running around the dark in Commando, there's always going to be, like, someone's going to get hurt, but it's like, it's like play at your own risk. I mean, if you get hurt, it's not like we're going to, it's not like you can get babied and, like, it's not like you get to, like, not be out. Like, you still got to play by the rules. No exceptions. And once they catch you with the flashlight, then you have to go to jail, and it's a progressive jail where as more people come in, you get bumped out and to go search again. The, the message of the game commando is the Romans are trying to capture Jesus and his followers, and, the, and like the item, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to represent Jesus, and the Romans hit him like he's in the cell, and we're all trying to like rescue Jesus and bring him back and like so he can die for our sins and save us. During our adult lock-in, it was probably the funniest game we've, that we've ever played uh, because I think we know each other too well to the point where we were strategizing on uh, where the guards hid the, hid the box. And when we know each other or we have twins, the Anderson twins, who were asking if they could channel the other one and see where they're hiding, hiding the box, um, but the last, the last person to hide it was uh, Shelby Svendahl and uh, her fiancé at the time went and hid the item. And as we all met, we talked about where would Shelby hide this? And immediately um, the answer was she's going to hide it in the choir room. And sure enough, when it was time for us to take off, we all headed to the choir room and we were back and we have now done that the fastest game of commando ever. When people ask, um, how do we get the 20 or 30 year olds here? I, I always say, I don't know, because I'm the one who's here. But I can't imagine um, being in another place. Uh, Lake Nicoma Lutheran Church has been my home. It's been my community. I consider the members here to be my family. And uh, whenever I've needed anything, they're the ones that are, are here for me. And I will always value that um, in my life. And if I'm blessed to have a family and kids, I, I know that this would be the place that I would want um, to raise them and, and to have that environment for them as well. We all have like a path and like something we're supposed to do with God. Like you could, you could call it destiny or like whatever you f believe in. But like church kind of like set me on it. Like I, before, like I was just kind of like going through life, just like going to school, hanging with friends, and like didn't really know what I want. And church has shown me a lot of like my values, I would say, and attributes that I could use in my life, and kind of just like started like the setting stones for my wall I'm gonna build to support me.